G'day sports fans, Dylan O'Donnell here from the Byron Bay Observatory. Did you get a new telescope for Christmas? Have you joined our exclusive club of mega dorks? Then welcome to hell, the most inspiring and interesting hobby you can imagine. You know, some people like football, some people like dancing, some people like having friends, but not us. We are astrophotographers. We like staring into the darkness to snatch faint signals from the void that basically prove that we are alone on our gravity prison the one we are slowly destroying. One of the first things you need to know as an astronomer is how to polar align your telescope and then how to star align the telescope. These are slightly different things. If you have an alt as mount, all you need to do is star alignment really and just make sure it's level. But if you have a better equatorial mount, which is ideal for photography, that's when polar alignment comes into play. Polar alignment is essentially starting your session by pointing your telescope directly at the north or south celestial pole. Star alignment, on the other hand, is basically the mount knowing the date, time, GPS and altitude of where it is in space so that it can know what star is meant to be wherever it's pointing. But the better your polar alignment is, the better your star alignment is and the better your go-tos and your tracking will be. And therefore, better photos, better observing generally. In the bad old days, before good computer software did most of this for us, uh, the main method was using a polar scope, right? Which is where you have a little scope in the mount and then you can look and point to Polaris, the pole star, which is great if you can see Polaris. Uh, for the southern hemisphere, we have octans, which we pretend is a valid method, but octans is basically useless. It's borderline invisible. The other main method was drift alignment, which is where you're pointing the scope east, west or north, south and then watching to see how the star drifts in the view and then adjusting the alt azimuth bolt so that it stops that drift. It takes ages, it's a huge pain. The best way to align these days is with software. Let the computer do all the hard work for you and the one I recommend is Nina's three point polar alignment routine. It just looks at the stars and tells you the alt azimuth adjustments you need to make. But don't worry if you don't have software or even a computer connected, if you have a Celestron hand controller that has an all star polar alignment routine built in and the SynScan Skywatcher hand controllers also have a SynScan polar alignment routine built into those as well. And I've used both of these for years flawlessly. All these three methods, Nina and the hand controllers, they work great. And I've got videos on all of those. But what do you do if you want to polar align in the day? Maybe you're shooting the sun, or maybe you want to do daytime planets, or maybe you want to do a time lapse that begins in the daylight and ends up in the nighttime. Or maybe you just want to rough polar align while the sun's up so that you can get started quicker when the sun goes down. In this video, I'm going to show you three ways that I'm doing this this year, rough polar alignment and daytime polar alignment. And I've got a special giveaway at the end of the video, which I never do. So stick around for that. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. Now look, I don't want to state the obvious, so I just want to get this one out of the way first. The best way to polar align in the day is to actually polar align at night. Uh, if you have the opportunity to do your full routine, use the Nina three point polar alignment routine at night and then leave your telescope set up for the day. You can swap out to a solar scope or whatever you need then. That's going to be perfect. And if you have the luxury of having the observatory or leaving it set up overnight, maybe with a tarp or something like that, that can help. If you do polar align at night, mark those tripod leg spots on your deck, get some chalk out, maybe get some tape, whatever you need to do to mark those positions, because then you can reuse those positions over and over again, at least for a rough polar alignment. But my all time favorite rough polar alignment routine for the day, even inside my house, is AR. Phones these days have the ability to see the South Celestial Pole, so you don't need to use that poloscope. In my case, I'm using Sky Guide, so I can see the South Celestial Pole up there, so I know with my phone which direction to point the telescope. So then you can rough that telescope position in. Easy. That AR mode gets me 99% of the way most of the time. I, I used that method to simply set up this mount out on the deck, put a solar scope on, 
and I might get a little bit of drift, but really not too much. But what I've been using lately is the move shoot move bracket. You might remember this in a previous video, I showed you the move shoot move rotator. And the rotator is cool, I like that product. I'm gonna get great Milky Way shots using my DSLR. It's a grab and go tracker, fantastic stuff. But what impressed me most was the bracket. Let me show you. This is the move shoot move 90 degree angle bracket. That is for your phone and this sits at 90 degrees compared to the mount. If I can attach this bracket where the polar scope is so that it sits exactly perpendicular to the scope, I can put my smartphone here and aim at the South Celestial Pole. But up until now, there was no way to do that. I would like to put this bracket on everything. So I reached out to them and said, could you make something so that I could attach this to any mount, particularly the Skywatcher GTI? One of their designers, Steve, took my idea and he fabricated a part for me. I tested the part, we fixed the tolerances, and now, We've got this. But not only is this roughed in, I'm pretty confident, because I've done this a lot now, that this would track the sun fine and there'd be no drift. Now if I'm doing nighttime stuff, this gets me so close to perfect that now I can run the three point polar alignment in Nina and go on with my nighttime stuff, but it's so close that that won't take very long at all. And if you're doing wide field stuff, this is already fine. So yeah, little information for the beginners about polar alignment generally, but also a good tip for us who have been looking for a way to polar align easily in the day. I have a bunch of these adapters. These are the universal adapters that will slip over a polar scope so that you can put the move shoot move bracket on the end and polar align easily in the day. I'm gonna give this away, but I haven't figured out how to do that. Um, <laughs> what should I do? You should be subscribed. Okay, step one, make sure you're subscribed. Okay, for step two, share this video or my channel link on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or blue sky and tag me and just tell me that you want one of these. As long as I'm tagged and I can check that you're subscribed, I can, I'll set up a randomizer and just pick a bunch of randoms. I've got four to give away, so I'm gonna give one away to an Australian, one away to a Kiwi from New Zealand, I'll give one to someone in the United States of America and I'll give another one to someone in let's go Canada. And because this video is dropping close to the new year, Happy New Year. I hope your astrophotography journey is going well. Thank you for following along for mine. You've been watching Star Stuff. My name is Dylan O'Donnell. And remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die. <laughs>